This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So, you think you know strength? You think you know everything there is to know about moving weight and building muscle? Hmm. What have I told you that's only scratching the surface of what your body is capable of? What if I told you there's a whole world out there of different training? What if I told you that it's not just about moving the weight, but controlling the weight, mastering the weight? Now, you have two choices. You can choose to take the green pill and return to the weights room as though nothing had ever happened. Or you can take the squishy egg and find out just how deep this rabbit hole goes. Wise choice. Muscle strength without control lacks finesse and utility. It's all good and well being able to lift something off the ground in one explosive movement, but can you hold it at arm's length? Can you lift it slowly? I always loved scenes in movies and TV shows like Dragon Ball, where the characters catch a punch just inches from their face and hold it there. Strength at awkward angles, on demand. And I've always been amazed by the incredible strength and control exhibited by hand balancers and calisthenics athletes to raise gracefully into a handstand and then demonstrate complete body control in that inverted position. You don't get this kind of strength through heavy lifting alone. You get it through heavy lifting with control. That means training the slow twitch fibers. And this technique might also be the key to unlocking bigger lifts in the gym and even increasing your running speed. So, you think you know about increasing strength and muscle? Most weightlifting and strength training focus on lifting weights with explosive force. This trains the larger motor units and the fast twitch muscle fibers. For reference, motor units are groups of muscle fibers that always fire together. And these are organized by type. Fast twitch muscle fibers are the fibers that produce the most force, but have the lowest endurance. This is typically what we want to focus on if we're building power. Training big motor units that contain lots of fast twitch muscle fibers results in greater strength gains on those lifts and leads to bigger muscles. What's not to like? Well, one issue with this kind of training is the strength curve. When you perform an explosive bench press, for example, you actually only really apply maximum effort at one point during the movement. This is less true if you're grinding out the movement, but even then you'll find that certain portions of the range of motion, the ROM, involve lower effort. Of course, these will be weaker, and as such, you will always need to generate momentum to move heavy weights past this point, and if for whatever reason you get caught in that position, you won't be able to exert as much strength. You can lift the weight, but you're not its master. You can't manipulate the weight, you can't control it. But what's going on here? I won't go into great detail, but seeing as we know that motor units fire on an all or nothing basis, they can't half fire. You might therefore wonder how training can lead to this angle specificity. There are a few answers that I might go into in future, but largely it comes down to muscle architecture. That is to say, it comes down to the structure of the muscle and the way the fibers are physically arranged. For example, Something called the penation angle refers to the angle of fibers in relation to the tendon. This is something you don't hear about much in fitness content, but it's really interesting. Angling the fibers more allows thicker fibers to be packed into tighter spaces. Likewise, the length of fibers can also vary, and I made a video on this very recently. This is due to an increase in sarcomeres in series. In other words, we're adding on to the ends of the fibers. Longer fibers are better at producing range of motion and velocity. You can encourage an increase in muscle fiber length using eccentric training. Watch that video for more. In that video, I also mentioned how this could alter the optimum length of the muscle. That means changing the length at which the muscle is capable of producing the most force. So you have a different level of available strength depending, of course, on your starting position. If your arm is fully locked out, for example, you'll likely be able to produce less force in a curl than if it's already partially bent. This can actually vary from muscle fiber to muscle fiber though, meaning that you might have more fibers within a single muscle that favor a certain length, or you might have a more even distribution across the full range of motion. You then need to think about the type of fiber. The nervous system also plays a role, the way in which you control the muscles. 
Not only can you improve your intramuscular coordination in order to exert the precise type of force you need for the task at hand, meaning you call to action precisely the motor units and muscle fibers within the muscle that you need, but you can also improve your intermuscular coordination. Intermuscular coordination refers to the way that the muscles work together to get a job done, because very few activities involve just one muscle. So for example, if you're weak at the end range of a movement, it might actually be because your own muscles are resisting the action at that position. If you lack strength at the top of a shoulder press, for example, it might be because your lats and pecs are trying to pull your arms back down. To overcome this, you need practice, and this way you learn reciprocal inhibition. This happens unconsciously. That means that the antagonistic muscles, the muscles that work in opposition to the movement, need to relax while the working muscles contract maximally. And this only comes with practice. But the real key to this kind of controlled power is to train the slow twitch muscle fibers and the smaller motor units that contain them. So type one muscle fiber is slow twitch. That means it has better endurance, but produces less power. Typically we think of less power as being a bad thing when it comes to strength training. But in fact, it's crucial for exerting control over resistance. Imagine that you're trying to push a very heavy box. Remember, motor units contract in a single all or nothing response so if you utilize your strongest motor units in one big explosive force, then you are going to push that box forwards with acceleration. This is good if you want to quickly move the box from point A to point B. What if you need to push that heavy box precisely? What if you need to push it perfectly onto an outline, for example? Well, now you need to not use the very biggest and fastest motor units because you otherwise slide it too far. Instead, you need to use just the right combination of motor units to move the box by the smallest increments. And this is intramuscular coordination. It's about having a refined signal to the muscles, a little finesse about choosing precisely how much force you want to employ. This is how you can engage in any fine movement. When handwriting, for example, you use tiny amounts of force by recruiting only the smallest motor units in the hands and forearms. This in turn allows you to make small controlled movements if you use a slightly bigger motor unit, the sudden jolt of force would result in a chaotic and uncontrolled writing style. And we see this when we try and write with our non-dominant hands. This is also how, for example, I might slowly lift a weight through its full range of motion. It's also how I can slowly lower myself from a handstand push-up. And it's how my body is able to make tiny adjustments in my forearms and shoulders to ensure I stay balanced in a handstand. Keep in mind, I'm not great at this. I'm just showing my examples. I've been working on it a lot lately, though. But if you don't train slow twitch fiber, you won't have this control and finesse. You will have blunt force, but you won't be able to balance or control the resistance to command the weight. So what do you do about it? Well, the answer is simple. Train the movements more slowly. This will likely involve using slightly lighter weights at first and then building back up to bigger numbers. Doing this alters the signal you send to the muscles so that you aren't recruiting all of the very largest motor units and are now reliant on those smaller and slower ones. Owing to something called Henneman's size principle, we actually always use our smaller motor units in conjunction with the larger ones. That's because the body recruits motor units in ascending size order and strength. Or think of it this way. The smaller units have a lower signal threshold that needs to be crossed in order for them to fire as compared to the larger ones. All we control is the size of the signal being sent, and thus any signal strong enough to recruit the larger motor units will also recruit the smaller ones, by definition. So surely, you can just train heavy and fast and know that all the motor units, big and small, are being trained. Problem is, the smaller units fatigue much more slowly than the bigger ones, and that means that if the weight is too heavy, you'll reach failure before you've adequately stimulated the smaller, slower fibers, and you won't be able to go slow enough to not use those big strong ones. So slow that bad boy right down and challenge yourself to maintain positions in order to effectively train the smaller motor units. Likewise, try awkward positions and training that involves a little more balance. This will teach you to make fine adjustments to your position using smaller motor units and supporting muscle groups. You will learn to command your body and the weight with finesse. You might be worrying now about converting all of your strength into slow endurance, but that's not really an issue. First of all, I'm not 
suggesting that you only use this kind of training. I'm suggesting that you combine it with other more explosive movements. I'm suggesting that we combine power and explosiveness with control, finesse and precision. At the same time, it's not that easy to convert type 2 fiber into type 1 fiber. This only happens to a small degree, although there's some genetic variability there. Just don't worry about it. It's perfectly possible to have finesse and control and balance, as well as pure brute strength and explosiveness. And this is why I love varying tempo in my workouts, why I love performing slow one-handed push-ups, and another reason I love hand balancing. It's an entirely different expression of strength. And there are actually many more good reasons to go slow too. For example, maybe you caught earlier that I said slow twitch muscle fibers and smaller motor units are always recruited. That means that even the most explosive activities in the world, like sprinting, actually also involve the slow twitch muscle fibers alongside the fast twitch. And that means that training them can contribute to more speed and performance, not to mention giving you more control and balance. Similarly, slow twitch muscle fibers can grow and get thicker, just like fast twitch muscle fibers. They're not as thick and they're not as big, but because there's more of them, they take up roughly the same amount of volume. So if you've hit a plateau when it comes to building muscle, slowing down can help you to tap into additional muscle growth by stressing those slower motor units and muscle fibers. The list goes on. Stop ego lifting and learn to command the weight. Thanks for watching and bye for now. This video was sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is a website building platform that lets users create modern, attractive websites in a matter of minutes. And I'm not exaggerating. Creating a website on Squarespace is as simple as choosing a template you like the looks of and then customizing it with an intuitive drag and drop system. There's literally nothing stopping you from building your own site, whether it's to promote a business, to express yourself, or just to take on a new creative challenge. You'll now be able to benefit from a slew of features from advanced formatting tools for creating beautiful blog posts to fully integrated social media features like easy share buttons and feeds published straight to your site, to members only gated content, appointment scheduling and comprehensive e-commerce tools for revenue generation. There's even a fully featured commenting system with threaded comments, replies and likes, not to mention analytics and SEO tools, the list goes on. From there, you can choose from the wide selection of plugins to extend your site's capabilities and build it out as you need. This way you can access things like inventory management, global shipping, and more. If you want to learn more, head over to squarespace.com. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Bioneer for 10% off a domain or website. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Thanks to you guys for watching and bye for now.